Welcome back, welcome back, any and all, glad you all could come back. Not only to hear the word, but be doers of the word. Glory be to a higher. I hope when you woke up this morning, you told Father God, thank you. He did see that woke us up. We didn't wake ourselves up. No, we can't do that. We can't even breathe on our own, believe it or not. But then I hope you told your loved ones that you love them. And I promise tomorrow, not even the rest of this day. And also tell Father, thank you, Father God, thank you for keeping you overnight as well. And um, I hope you all are saved, have given your life to Christ Jesus that you have been baptized down in the water in the name of Jesus Christ, and that you are now a new being in Christ, and you're living a life of holiness, reading God's word, the Bible, preferably the King James Version, going down on your knees in prayer and crying out to the Father, and that you're having a personal relationship with him so you can hear from him, hallelujah, and he can guide your steps. And also you have a life of daily repentance, because we live in these fleshly bodies, and the flesh is always warring with the Spirit. I love you all with the love of the Lord, and that's why I tell you the truth, and Father God loves you more. With that being said, hallelujah, today we're still in the book of Jeremiah. We're still in the book of Jeremiah, and today we're on chapter 34. Jeremiah warns Zedekiah, and there's another chapter to that. The people break a promise. Before we begin our reading, we're going to say a prayer for children of all ages. Hallelujah. Excuse that noise. That was me stepped on a, a bottle. I dropped it, the water bottle. Excuse me. Hallelujah, hallelujah. That's what I get for not picking it up. <laughs> Glory to your holy name, Lord. Help us all, Lord. Father God, we come to you today to say thank you. Thank you, my Father. Thank you for this day. Thank you, Father, for every day. Thank you, Father, for waking us up this morning. Thank you, Father, for keeping us overnight. Thank you, Father, for giving us parents that love us and siblings that we love and friends, too. And thank you, Father, for teaching us to treat others the way that we want to be treated with love and respect. And we love you, my Father, and we honor you. It's in Jesus' mighty name that we pray. Amen. Amen indeed. Amen. Glory to your holy name, Lord. Glory to your holy name. Jeremiah chapter 34. Jeremiah warns Zedekiah. King Nebuchadnezzar had a large army made up of people from every kingdom in his empire. He and his army were attacking Jerusalem and all the nearby towns when the Lord told me to say to King Zedekiah, I am the Lord, and I am going to let Nebuchadnezzar capture the city and burn it down. You will be taken prisoner and brought to Nebuchadnezzar, and he will speak with you face to face. Then you will be led away to Babylonia. Zedekiah, I promise that you won't die in battle. You will die a peaceful death. People will mourn when you die, and they will light bonfires in your honor, just as they did for your ancestors, the kings who ruled before you. I went to Zedekiah and told him what the Lord had said. Meanwhile, the king of Babylonia was trying to break through the walls of Lishish, Ezekiah, and Jerusalem, the only three towns of Judah that had not been captured. The people break a promise. King Zedekiah, his officials, and everyone else in Jerusalem made an agreement to free all Hebrew men and women who were slaves. No Jew would keep another as a slave. And so all the Jewish slaves were given their freedom, but those slave owners changed their minds and forced their former slaves back into slavery. That's when the Lord told me to say to the people, I am the Lord God of Israel, and I made an agreement with your ancestors when I brought them out of Egypt, where they had been slaves. As part of this agreement, you must let a Hebrew slave go free for six years of service. Your ancestors did not obey me. But you decided to obey me and do the right thing by setting your Hebrew slaves completely free. You even went to my temple, and in my name you made an agreement to set them free. But you have abused my name because you broke your agreement and forced your former slaves back into slavery. You have disobeyed me by not giving your slaves their freedom. So I will give you freedom, the freedom to die in battle or from disease or hunger. I will make you disgusting to all other nations on earth. You asked me to be a witness when you made the agreement to set your slaves free. And as part of the ceremony, you cut a calf into two parts, then walked between the parts. But you people of Jerusalem have broken that agreement as well as my agreement with Israel. So I will do to you what you did to that calf. I will let your enemies take all of you prisoner, including the leaders of Judah and Jerusalem, the royal officials, the priests, and everyone else who walked between the two parts of the calf. These enemies will kill you and leave your bodies lying on the on the ground 
as food for birds and wild animals. These enemies are King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylonia and his army. They have stopped attacking Jerusalem, but they want to kill King Zedekiah and his high officials. So I will command them to return and attack again. This time they will conquer the city and burn it down, and they will capture Zedekiah and his officials. I will also let them destroy the towns of Judah so that no one can live there any longer. Mm. God's willing, on Monday, we'll come back, still in the book of Jeremiah, and we'll be on chapter 35, which has uh, uh, two chapters. Learn a lesson from the Rechabites, and the Lord makes a promise to the Rechabites. You all tell your loved ones that you love them. We're not promised tomorrow, not even the rest of this day. Tell them all about Father God, who gave his only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, who died on the cross for all our sins. He didn't die for one or some. He died for us all. So if you haven't given your life to him, I don't know what you're waiting for. Choose ye this day whom you're going to serve. We're living in the last days. Everybody thinks they got plenty of time to do this and do that, and they're putting everything before God. You wish, you're going to wish that you hadn't done that. You need to give your life to Christ and honor him and obey him. And um, you want to tell your loved ones that you love them? We're not promised tomorrow, not even the rest of the day. Tell them all about Father God who gave his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, who died on the cross for all our sins. He didn't die for one of some. Father God says, love the Lord thy God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And love your neighbor as yourself. That's not something up for debate or discussion. It's something we all must do. So please do it. And remember, your neighbors are, yes, those that live by you. Love them as you love yourself. But your neighbors are also, anywhere that you go, those near you are your neighbors. Love them as you love yourself. And if you have any unforgiveness in your heart, please forgive. It's not worth it to go to hell because you want a hole in your heart to be strong, to be so strong-headed and, you know, bull-headed that you don't want to forgive. If you want your Father in heaven to forgive you for your sins and transgressions, you better forgive your fellow man. And I mean sincerely forgive them in your heart. All right? I love you all to love the Lord. That's why I tell you the truth. And Father God loves you more. You all have yourself a beautiful, blessed day. Children of all ages, youngest, oldest alike, and a beautiful, blessed weekend. Please stay safe and watch your surroundings. God bless you. Bye-bye.